morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, January 28th. Thanks for joining us today. So some of you out there cover your ears. Well, sort of <laughs> earmuffs, kids. Um, we've got an interesting um, revelation. You may have heard about this in the past 10 or 20 years. They say that people that tend to use profanity are highly intelligent. Yeah, according to this article right here. So yeah, science reveals benefits to sounding like a sailor is mm -hmm. the headline there. So uh, being told you curse like a sailor is usually not a compliment. But usually. <laughs> usually. But scientists who have studied swearing for decades say using foul language is actually beneficial. So again, we haven't met a study we didn't like uh, here on GMSA at 9. Numerous <laughs> studies have found using taboo words may be a sign of intelligence, honesty, and creativity, as well as a way to withstand pain. Although swearing has been deemed language of poverty, researchers found well-educated people are better at coming up with curse words and those with a smaller vocabulary. Yeah, so profanity, as we said, has been linked to mm -hmm. honesty and creativity. People choose such powerful words to express their emotions. And when doing so, an area of the right brain is activated, which is known as the creative brain. Yeah, and so, oh yeah, so according to Timothy J, it's a professor uh, at, at Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, uh, he and his team found taboo words positively correlated with the big five personality traits, neuroticism and openness, and negatively correlated with agreeableness and conscientiousness. Uh, they also said, uh, this guy told the New York Times that people who's, those who swear are seen as being more honest because mm -hmm. truth tellers get right to the point and do not think about what they are going to say. <laughs> a study from uh, 2017 uh, conducted by the International Team found profanity is typically used to express a person's genuine feelings, speaking about honesty. Yeah. So we're just being honest about apparently pr profanity isn't all that bad sometimes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. We don't really swear though, you and no, I don't. No, of really. course not, of course yes, not. not a, and not I don't a, think my mom would buy this at all. <laughs> mm -mm. Honest, mom. <laughs> no. Let's take a look at today's nine at nine. More than 83,000 lives lost due to COVID-19 this month, making January the deadliest month to date during the pandemic. The nation's top coronavirus experts project 90,000 more Americans will die from the virus in February. President Biden's COVID-19 team says it will be months before everyone who wants a vaccine will be able to get one. But FEMA is now in talks with the military, hoping to enlist as many as 10,000 troops to assist in administering vaccines. An impromptu memorial is growing for a beloved pediatrician killed in a hostage incident on Tuesday. Flowers and stuffed animals are decorating a sign at Children's Medical Group where Dr. Katherine Dotson worked. Police believe another doctor reportedly had terminal cancer, killed Dotson, then committed suicide. Millions of people across the nation are under severe weather advisories. Some are preparing for conditions with near zero visibility and facing an astonishing 100 inches of snowfall. Today, NASA will pay tribute to those who lost their lives in the pursuit of space exploration. NASA will honor the crews of Apollo 1, Space Shuttle Columbia, and Space Shuttle Challenger. A new study finds the number of sharks in the world's oceans has declined 71% since 1970. The Great Hammerhead Shark, the Scalloped Hammerhead Shark, and the Oceanic White Tip Shark are now classified as critically endangered. Wall Street is getting manipulated by a group of newcomers. A small group of day traders organized on Reddit pushed shares of GameStop up 1,700% this month. The traders are buying the stock in droves to raise its price because hedge fund managers have shorted it. The U.S. Postal Service is releasing some new forever stamps this spring, inspired by a galaxy far, far away. It will offer stamps of up to 10 droids from the Star Wars universe, including the beloved R2-D2, C-3PO, and BB-8. Senator Bernie Sanders made a splash when he wore his fa now famous knit mittens at the inauguration. That fashion moment has now helped him raise $1.8 million for charity, and that's today's Nine at Nine. Good for Bernie. Good for Bernie and his causes. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that you know, the, those memes continued on over the weekend and then this week, so it's nice to see it's all going to a good cause now.
I even, uh, you guys, if you've watched the show before, I'm, I'm still into fishing and uh, fish finders now are super fancy. And somebody put a meme the other day and it was a fish finder that showed, you know, underwater trees and fish. And there was a silhouette <laughs> of Bernie Sanders <laughs> sitting, on the fish finder. Sitting there. It was oh, kind of funny. That is pretty funny. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. I wonder what's next though. You know, we, we go through these phases for like, it's like a week of the uh -huh. same meme. Like what's, what's gonna be? I, I don't, something called planking is, uh, is coming back. I no, like that I'm like, not. I'm just kidding. I, I was just. Say, I feel like that was 10 years ago. It was. It okay. was. Yes. I was just see if you'd go for it. <laughs> uh, high temperatures today. We're going to be up in the uh, upper 50s. It's going to be a cool day. We started off chilly this morning. Temperatures in the 30s. We'll see some 60s around the area too. Some partly cloudy skies to deal with. Here's the next couple days for your planning out your weekend. We'll see uh, increasing humidity tomorrow. Saturday, we'll start off cloudy, some drizzle, but I think we're, we'll get some clearing skies by the afternoon, and it'll turn out to be a pretty nice day, 77 on your Saturday. Uh, let's look at the numbers right now. 41 at the airport, 40 Holotus, 36 Burning Stage, 38 Rio Medina, 40 right now in Hondo. In the pollen count, Mountain Sears high, yes, it's 3,070, but it is down from where it was yesterday. Mold also down significantly, down to 420, so some good news there. Forecast for today, again, up around 59 for a high. Partly cloudy skies, northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about the weekend. We've also got the drop monitor updated. We'll show you that in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, there is 1604 in Badera, I-35 at I-37. Things are looking good. Traffic is light from what we can see right now. Top stories for following today. A man has been injured after shooting happened outside the Roxy Sports Bar on the northwest side early this morning. Police tell us the man who was injured may not exactly be the victim. It happened before 1230 this morning in the 3200 block of Warsbach Road. Police say they believe the man he had been excuse me, that the man may have been the first person to fire those shots, leading to a bigger shooting with another man. Police did not say what led to the shootout. However, a bar patron tells us noticed bouncers escorting him out of the bar shortly before the shots were fired. Police are still looking for that other gunman. And San Antonio police are hoping you can help find the man who they say is responsible for pointing a gun and robbing a woman in a parked car. Now, police tell us it happened back on January 6th that a jack in the box at I-35 in Riddiman. Take a look at your screen. See if you recognize this man. They say he walked up to a car and pointed a gun at the driver. Officers told the woman he would kill her if she did not drive to an ATM and withdraw money. Police say that suspect ran off after he took the cash. If you recognize him, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. To the pandemic, local health officials reporting 1,341 new cases of COVID here in Bear County. Nine more people have died. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the seven-day moving average is now at 1,567 cases per day. More than 1,300 people are being treated for COVID at hospitals across the county, and the risk level for San Antonio is still set at severe. Later today, you have another chance to sign up for an appointment for the COVID-19 vaccine. You can sign up by calling 311 or registering online on the city's website for the vaccine that's being administered at the Alamo Dome. Remember, you must be a frontline health care worker, a long term care facility resident or be over the age of 65. You are also eligible if you are 16 and older with a chronic health condition. And you can't call till 2 p.m. 2 p.m. again. 2 p.m. to starting today on, and then daily. In your morning headlines, there are new details of a plot to kidnap Michigan's governor. And three hikers fight for their lives after getting stuck on a mountain. RJ Marcus joins us live with those stories and more. Well, that's Good a morning. nice surprise, RJ. Good to see yeah, you. Yeah, good headlines. to see you guys, too. Good to see you. That story, that uh, hiker rescue, a uh, very interesting story. We'll get to that one here in a little bit. But first, news from uh, President Biden. His administration is set to reopen enrollment for Obamacare today. It's part of a series of executive actions on health care, and it's a first step toward making good on a campaign promise to boost the Affordable Care Act. It comes at a time when more Americans could be facing a loss of health coverage because of the pandemic. The Trump administration cut open, open enrollment on the federal exchanges in half to six weeks. It ended on December 15th, but President Biden has the power to open it back up. The president's order directs officials to reopen enrollment to those who need coverage from February 15th until May 15th. He's also taking executive action to strengthen Medicaid and protect women's health.
Okay, guys, new documents and video this morning are giving us more insight into the plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. One of the men who took part in the plot is named Ty Garbin. Video of what the group was planning to do was released through court documents, and it shows Garbin's gun and weapons collection. Officials said the group was allegedly planning to storm the Capitol in June and, quote, try any politicians they caught for treason. Then they wanted to, quote, execute them by hanging them on live television. One of the men suggests using a firebomb as a distraction while they take Whitmer from her home. Garbin also apparently suggested taking down a nearby bridge to stop police. So Garbin has pleaded guilty, and he's also agreed to testify against the other men. Garbin is a former airline mechanic with no criminal history and is still looking at the possibility of life in prison. Okay, guys, switching gears here, the Tokyo Olympics, their officials are saying getting the COVID-19 vaccine will not be a prerequisite for those participating in the Summer Games in 2021. The Olympic Committee, the International Committee, and Tokyo officials said they expect vaccinations to make progress by the time of the Games, which are scheduled for July. They hope as many people as possible will take the vaccine and be vaccinated by this time. Tokyo officials also said vaccinations would be administered for athletes, but it would not be an obligation. So remember, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich is coaching the U.S. men's Olympic basketball team at this year's Games. So that'll be an interesting story to follow. And finally this morning, a daring mountain rescue that took days. Three hikers were stranded on a mountain in Sedona, Arizona, and no one could get to them because of dangerous winter conditions. The group was enjoying the hike when a blizzard blew into the area. They had to hunker down inside a cave and called for help, but the rescue crew that was sent for them also got stuck trying to make their way to those hikers. Officials tried to get them supplies, but the drones could not make it through that winter weather. The hikers stayed in the cave with no food and water, just trying to stay warm for more than 48 hours until they finally heard a helicopter flying over them. They flew over us and I was like, oh no, maybe they didn't see us, but they looped around and we waved them again and the crew chief leaned out and waved down at us and that was the best feeling in the world. Mm, yeah, you could imagine. Uh, one of the hikers did get a case of frostbite, but for the most part, they were all okay. Now, interestingly enough, they say they'll probably go back uh, with more food and snacks, uh, but definitely not during wither. winter. Sorry, <laughs> Mark, Stephanie, I guess that's a pretty good idea there. They are yeah, lucky. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It, it's kind of like a scene out of a movie to me for so you know what I mean when you're just like waiting for that person to oh, get rescued man. and yeah mm -hmm. I could imagine those hours must have been just you know it's bad tough. when the rescuers can't even rescue you exactly oh, yeah. very yeah. scary thank yeah. you, you RJ. RJ thanks guys <laughs> 9 10 42 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9 the iPhone 12 has helped Apple's revenue still ahead in your consumer news how much a company made from iPhone sales Amanda Gorman has made headlines since her debut on the national stage at President Biden's inauguration. Where the poet is headed to next. Plus, a fifth grader is giving back to canine officers. More details on his nonprofit and how it helped protect canines across the nation. That's coming up after the break. Stocks really tumbled yesterday. All that GameStop nonsense that was happening on Wall Street. Right now, we have good news. The Dow is up about 440 points. There, 30,737. Night 14, an 11-year-old boy from Ohio has made a lasting impact throughout the San Antonio Police Department. And after receiving a petition for help, Brady Snufkowski made a large donation worth thousands of dollars to some of San Antonio's finest and furriest. Our Alicia Beretta met with Brady and has more on his mission to protect canine units across the nation. Meet Brady Sklanofsky, a fifth grader on a mission to make a difference. My organization is a nonprofit and it, um, protects canines. He is the founder and CEO of Brady's Canine Fund that was started back in 2018 and has helped more than 300 canines across police departments nationwide, including here in San Antonio. I visited all of your canines um, in your police department. So they contacted us through email and they basically said we're looking to outfit our entire team and threw it out there that there's 18 dogs. SAPD canine officer Wiley and Duke are now better protected thanks to the canine street fighter vest valued at $550 each 
made possible through fundraising and an award Brady recently won. I received $10,000 and um, that got me able to um, invest the rest of your canines. Well, I know the handlers are very appreciative of this because that's their best friend that they work with. So to have them protected means the world to them. The vests have a tracking harness and are made with similar technology to what astronauts wear. It's when the dog is cold, it warms them. But most importantly, in the warm climates like Texas, it cools the dog, which is super important because the dogs can overheat wearing vests. On breezy and chilly days like these, those canines like Wiley and Duke that we met are probably staying warm. But in response to this large donation, this is what the San Antonio Police Department had to say. To date, SAPD has received eight vests for our canines. We have been advised that additional vests will be donated to the remaining canine unit and also to our bomb squad canines, end quote. So a very good deed that Brady has done for our police department here. Hey, Alicia, what's next for Brady? Well, with these 18 vests that he's finally purchased, his work isn't done right now. He says that he, on average, has about 50 canines on the waiting list. So the work now is to continue fundraising to fulfill those orders. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Very cool. Thank you, Alicia. Thanks, Alicia. 917, Justin's back here, and uh, it was a really cold morning, especially in parts of the Hill Country yes. today. It was chilly. We did have a freeze up there. Not a freeze here in San Antonio. We got down to 36, but uh, it was definitely jacket weather to start. Let's look at some of the numbers this morning. 28 Fredericksburg, 29 Kerrville, 32 in Rock Springs. So those were your three spots. It did drop down to freezing uh, or a little bit below. Everybody else in the 30s this morning, but we're starting to rebound. Take a look at this time lapse. Boy, this is gorgeous. We had some of those high clouds, beautiful colors as the sun came up and now temperatures have made it into the 40s. 41 degrees at the airport. Northeast Julie winds at about 10 miles per hour. As you might imagine, the air is still extremely dry, so dew points are in the 20s. And the temperatures right now, 37 Boulevard, 43 in New Braunfels, 35 Comfort, 41 Rio Medina. And you just saw Alicia there, a little bit of wind out there. There is a wind chill. It's going to feel just a little bit cooler thanks to that northerly wind. 43 Kennedy, 40 in Gonzales, 45 in Catula. Dew points, yeah, they're low now. We are going to see these jump up, though. Starting tomorrow, you may notice it by Friday evening. And then by Saturday morning, we've got dew points in the 60s. It's a brief rise because we'll get a frontal battery on Saturday. And that knocks two points back down into the 20s. Uh, so expect more humidity tomorrow and on Saturday morning. Kind of the bottom line there. As far as the visible satellite picture goes, we do have some mid to high level clouds working through. That'll be off and on today. So partly cloudy skies uh, for today. A little bit thicker cloud cover tomorrow. And the drought monitor is in. Same old areas in this drought. We just keep it going here. Six months now where... Uh, these areas west of San Antonio have been in an extreme drought. Not a great situation. I uh, wish we would get a little bit more rain with this next system. It's not looking that way. Looks like our rain chances will be really pretty low. And if we see anything, it's going to be very, very light. As far as Texas goes, about 44% of the state is in drought. A week ago, it was 49%. So there is some improvement there. And as we look at the bigger picture out west, Still a large portion of the country within uh, drought conditions, stretching from Phoenix to Vegas, Denver, back down to El Paso. California is doing a little bit better, and they've been getting some pretty heavy rain with this, uh, this next system, which is moving on board. Uh, flooding rains there. We've got some heavy snow in the higher elevations. So very dynamic system for them, but once it moves across the country, it loses some of its punch, and certainly for us, I think that the... Uh, more significant weather will be to our north. So as it moves a little bit closer, we'll see that increase in cloud cover. This is Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. Maybe some drizzle, maybe some fog. There'll be enough moisture to support that. Uh, and then by, say, midday Saturday, we've still got some clouds. Notice as this front comes through, though, we're not really getting any shower activity, mainly off to our north and east if we do see anything at all. And then by the afternoon, we're clearing out, dry area moves in, and it turns into a pretty nice weekend. I think Saturday is going to be warm. Once this front passes by, we'll actually get some northwesterly winds, and that will actually uh, help to create some warmer temperatures. 59 degrees today, partly cloudy, northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, and uh, look for 
Uh, 68 coming up tomorrow as uh, we get more moisture in here. Quite a bit of cloud cover Friday night and the Saturday morning, but some afternoon clearing on Saturday after some fog and drizzle. And then we'll go 72 on Sunday. Sunday looks nice, a little breezy. 67 on Monday, Groundhog's Day, 69 and mostly sunny. We'll see if he sees his shadow, guys. Your groundhog is funny. He's waving his arms like, here I am. Like I said, he's uh, he's he's feeling good about what spring's going to bring us. All right. Thank yeah. you, Justin. And we're excited too, Justin. Right now it's nine, uh, just about 921, running about 41 degrees. And chicken wings are one of the most popular foods Americans eat on Super Bowl Sunday. How many wings experts are predicting that Americans will eat this year? That's coming up next. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to ksatdeals.com. With everyone at home these days, your bathroom may be getting more use. I have a new toilet unclogging tool for you today. No more ugly plunger, no more plumber visits. The Toilet Saver is the fastest, most hygienic way to unclog a toilet, and it's very easy to use. This heavy-duty J-shaped design rakes all of the excess waste from the trapped area. It's light and easy to use, just 8.6 ounces, and it unclogs the toilet fast. It's as simple as rake, poke, flush. First, rake all the excess waste away from the waste trap to clear the way. Finish using the other side of the toilet saver to poke through the remaining clog to clear, flush, clean, and disinfect the tool. Now the retail price, $45. The case at deals price, $34.99. That's a 23% discount. Just head over to caseatdeals.com for this one and many more. In your consumer news, Facebook among the businesses that have thrived during the pandemic. Profits are up more than 50% since last year. The company announced a profit of more than $11 billion in just the last three months of 2020. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg says he's very gratified businesses continue to use his company's services during these challenging times. The social media company is also facing scrutiny over the role its platforms may have played in spreading lies about the presidential election. Despite the negative publicity and antitrust cases, analysts argue Facebook is still the world's most dominant advertising platform. The iPhone 12 has helped Apple. The company reported quarterly revenue of more than $111 billion on Wednesday. That's more than the $103 billion analysts predicted. Revenue from iPhone sales make up more than $65 billion of that. Experts believe the newest iteration has performed so well because it's Apple's first iPhone that connects to super-fast 5G networks. Apple's market cap reached a record $2.4 trillion this week. Turning now to your Super Bowl news after making debut on the national stage at the inauguration, America's Youth Poet Laureate will be in the spotlight once again, but this time for the Super Bowl. Amanda Gorman will recite an original poem before the big game on February 7th. The poem will highlight three people selected by the NFL as honorary captains for the game. M&M's giving fans a sneak peek of its Super Bowl ad this year. The 32nd spot will premiere virtually on Zoom on February 3rd. First 50,000 people to register on the M&M's website will be able to participate in the sweet treat, but everyone can see the new ad during the first commercial break after Super Bowl 55 kicks off. And you'll want to get your Super Bowl wings order in right now. Americans are expected to eat a staggering 1.4 billion chicken wings on Super Bowl Sunday. That's enough wings to circle the earth three times. The National Chicken Council's wing report says that's up 2% from last year. The uptick is because of the pandemic. Wings are a great comfort food and they hold up for deliveries. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is watering just watching this <laughs> it, this file video from wherever yes, we got. It looks great. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. 927, <laughs> 43 degrees. There's more head on GMSA at 9. San Antonio is a city with rich history. This week's Case Set Explains episode looks into the historical impact, leaders, and success stories of San Antonio's black community. More details coming up. And still ahead, some people in Las Vegas took advantage of the wintry weather, how they enjoyed their version of this winter wonderland. Plus, go Spurs, go! The Silver and Black had a good night, taking home a win against the Celtics. RJ will be back in the studio to talk about the highlights. That's next. Let's check the roads real quick. For Grins, 35 at Alamo. It's a beautiful day to be on the freeway. You're watching GMSA. Wild 
Spurs game ends with a win for the silver and black. RJ Marquez is back to break down this big win over the Boston Celtics. Heck of a game. Oh yeah, guys. Definitely uh, all the positives and negatives that we've seen from this team this season. And it is very hard to believe that we are now a quarter of the way into the regular season, 18 games in. The Spurs looking pretty good, 10 and 8 right now atop the Southwest Division. I don't think anyone could have predicted that uh, going into the year, especially without Derek White. And we do have news on Derek White here in a little bit. But first of all, this big game here against the Boston Celtics. Boston, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And we start here in the second quarter when the Spurs really kind of uh, hit, hit a nice gear here towards the end of the first half. Patty Mills with the steal. We saw a couple of nice uh, long range shots there from LaMarcus Aldridge. And this was a really nice sequence here. End of the first half, get a steal. Kelvin Johnson's all pumped up about it. Lonnie Walker hits a uh, buzzer beating shot there. Spurs up 61-47. Right, end of the first half, and then uh, second half, things kind of uh, fall apart for <laughs> for the San Antonio Spurs. They ended up uh, allowing Boston to score like 37 points in the third quarter, and uh, but you know what? For the most part, uh, hung in there in the fourth quarter. You can see right there, Patty Mills looking pretty solid, uh, Lamarcus Aldridge. So they were up big. Boston makes this comeback, and we've seen it all season from this San Antonio team, especially in the first quarter, third quarter, a lot of mistakes. They uh, do not necessarily come out uh, ready to go when they come out of the half, and so we saw it happen there. But this play right here, DeJounte Murray to seal the win for San Antonio. Again, a big win here, 110 to 106. Boston missing the final shot there, and here we go, Spurs. Looking good. DeMar DeRozan also hit a big shot before that DeJounte steal. He finishes with 21 points, 7 assists. Keldon Johnson, the Mustang, 18 points, 10 rebounds. Let's hear what those two guys have to say after this win. We held on, especially against a, a talented team, um, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. We held on. We knew they was going to make a push, make a run. We didn't get discouraged by it. You know, we had a couple lapses, couldn't score offensively, and they came down, took advantage of it. But you know, we held on tight. It was definitely, definitely a good test. I feel like uh, it challenged me on both ends of the floor. But. Um... Yeah, very good stuff there. You know, DeMar DeRozan, I, I found it interesting. These guys actually, like, work out after the game. <laughs> They'll go and get, like, uh, some lifts in, in the gym. It's pretty interesting. So they come out sometimes looking more tired <laughs> than they do after the game. But uh, big win there. And, of course, this news earlier in the day uh, before this game, Coach Popovich said that Derek White is expected to return this weekend. Hey, speaking of Coach Pop, there's a reason why we're showing this here. This is really <laughs> interesting. Wow. So, okay. Today is Coach Popovich's 72nd birthday. Happy birthday, Coach Pop. Happy 72. birthday, Coach Pop. Happy birthday. Yes, 72 years young. And the reason we're showing this is because yesterday Rudy Gay was asked about Coach Popovich's stamina and whether that's inspiring for the younger guys. And Rudy, <laughs> <laughs> this is an amazing photo. Rudy just said that he was like, referred to this photo and he was like, yeah, have you all seen that viral photo? He's like, the man can jump. He said Coach Pop has better ups than a lot of the players on the team. Wow. That's a fact. Yeah. I, he's like two feet off the ground there. Mm -hmm. This was just an amazing photo taken earlier this year from the Spurs win at the Clippers. Uh, so Pop, 72 years old, still making things happen. Um, really done a great job with this year's team. And I'm sure he's enjoying uh, some of his fine wine. I wonder if Bernie Sanders is like, yeah, this can be the new meme. I'm cool with that. Yeah, it, for a while, it was a big viral thing. I, this story we posted on our website because the, the whole picture went viral for a couple of days. But uh, yeah, Rudy Gay specifically referenced this and was just like, look at this guy right you know, here. I mean, weird. He almost looks like Gandalf on Harry Potter's broom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, Love yeah, it. some pretty Love cool it. stuff there. Coach Pop, uh, yeah, Coach Pop has hops. Um, okay, so guys, so just a reminder, the Spurs are back at the AT&T Center to take on Denver tomorrow. Another uh, key game here as San Antonio, again, looking pretty good in contention for the Western Conference playoffs, and they're going to get Derek White back Yay. pretty soon. Here. That is so great news. Stuff. Hey, can yeah. we end on a Texans note real quick? Oh, yes. And Deshaun Watson's formally asked for a trade out of Houston. I saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, the Texans, of course, hired their new head coach last night. Right. Deshaun Watson has not been very happy about nope. the direction of the organization, so we may have seen the last of Deshaun in H-Town. Sounds like it. Thank yeah. you, RJ. I have a feeling Thanks, we're going to see you again in a matter of minutes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. I'm sure. Bye for now. Bye, guys. Let's go outside. Out. <laughs> yeah, let's go outside with live cam. It's, it's nice out there. So it was, it's funny.
but uh -huh. deceiving, of course, because I went to go get, you know, coffee during the yep. break, and uh, it's kind of chilly. In your car, right? Of course, from Where my car. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is cold out there. It is jacked weather this morning. This is one of the coldest mornings we've seen in a while. Temperatures dipped down into the 30s. We got down to 36 here in San Antonio. We're starting to see things warm up, though. Gorgeous sunrise. Take a look at this picture in our KSAC Connect. Stephanie sent this in. Ah, that is nice. The colors were beautiful this morning. When you get those high cirrus clouds uh, and the sun comes up and when the sun sets, you get the really, really nice colors. Great job, Stephanie. Thank you so much. 35 degrees in Comfort, 40 Canyon Lake, 43. In New Braunfels, 42 stents and 40 right now in Hondo. Uh, we have sort of turned a corner. Now there is just a little bit of a breeze, so it feels cooler out there. 35 is what it feels like right now in San Antonio. 36, the current wind chill in New Braunfels. Your forecast today, hey, we're going to struggle to get out of the 50s, close to 64 high, partly cloudy skies. We will see some warmer temperatures next couple days, and uh, Saturday is sort of our transition day. So we'll take another look at that weekend forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. San Antonio is a city rich with history from the missions to the majestic theater. Samuel Maverick to Henry Cisneros. There are countless stories of people, places and events that have helped bring us to where we are today. In this week's Case Set Explains episode, why those elements of our city's past are so important and how it could influence the future. In honor of Black History Month coming up in the month of February, our team started thinking about San Antonio's own black history, and we realized how many stories have not been told. San Antonio has lots of history for everybody to know about, but there are certain stories that are profound and interesting when it comes to our own black community, and we wanted to explore those and shed a lot of light in this episode. Yeah, Myra, it's almost impossible to tell the full story of the uh, black community here in San Antonio, but it is filled with so much culture, so much history, uh, so much art, so many leaders that made uh, the black community what it is now in San Antonio and really had a voice during those years, uh, We, you know, after slavery, reconstruction, throughout that time period to really, really represent the black community in the way it is now. And it is a, uh, as we said, it was, it's a task to do, but at the same time, it was great to learn about all these different stories and history. And one of the things that we really examined in this episode, which I found fascinating, Fascinating was how the east side of San Antonio has become home to so many people in our black community. And that story, one that RJ mm -hmm. explored, that goes back hundreds of years. It involves uh, the founding of a church. It involves the very first people to ever come to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So it's it's fascinating to see how that developed in our community. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many different milestones, uh, moments here in San Antonio where the black community had this uh, uh, just an immense amount of influence in what we have now. And it was great kind of looking back at seeing uh, just some of the many accomplishments that uh, several black leaders had and just the influence they had on our present day and really what the East Side kind of represents now for the city of San Antonio. And over the last year, we are witnessing black history happen across this country when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement. We take a look at what that has meant for San Antonio, how some activists involved mm -hmm. in that very movement here locally, how some history professors here locally believe that history may look back on this moment in time. Of course, we all know about the civil rights movement, but how will that influence um, the history that we learn going forward? Check out this episode, ksat.com slash explains. It's out for you to view right now on demand. Some great stories and learn more about the history of San Antonio. 940, about 43 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9 and still ahead, a fake wedding with a real purpose and rare snow sledding in the desert. Next in today's Take a Look at This. And welcome back. It's 943. Like so many others, the wedding industry suffered in 2020 and a joint effort and a fake wedding is hoping to change that for the new year. CNN's Jeremy Roth explains in today's Take a Look at This. Here comes the fake bride. Yep, at this wedding, there's a bride, a groom, and dozens of guests, but none of it is real. It's a mock wedding put on by industry professionals in Rhode Island to prove a point that it is still possible to get hitched safely and in style during the pandemic. Wedding vendors of all sorts play the roles of family, friends, and the happy couple. The event started with swab tests and masks and ended with cocktails and music, but understandably, no dancing. 
organizers worked with state officials to cover the event and create a how-to guide of safe ceremony procedures. After a wedding washout in 2020, they're hoping to kickstart the industry and be back in business happily ever after. From wedding to sledding. After a snowstorm blanketed parts of the Southwest, folks in Las Vegas got out to enjoy a rare winter wonderland while they could, knowing that all too soon, the sun would turn the snowy slopes of Sin City soggy. Likewise, in Arizona, a party of pachyderms pranced and played in the plummeting powder, particularly Penzi, a baby elephant at Tucson's Reed Park Zoo who couldn't seem to get enough of the seldom seen white stuff. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. And right now on KSET.com, pre-K for SA enrollment for the 2021-2022 school year will open on Monday, February 1st. The application process serves families of four years old who are born on or before September 1st on a first-come, first-served basis. Accepted applicants will be notified by email beginning February 7th. I want to take a look at the sky this afternoon. NASA says first full moon of 2021 will rise today around 1.15 p.m. Astronomers are calling it the Wolf Moon. Have rise to the sky for nightfall and early risers can see it tomorrow morning. You can read more about both these stories right now on KSAT.com. Very cool. And I think Justin Horn has a picture of a moon. Right? Is that what that, that is behind exactly you? Exactly what it is. Beautiful segue nice. here as we go into weather. Yeah, take a look at this picture on our KSAT Connect. This was sent in by Irma. Uh, this was the moon this morning. Yeah, it's almost full and uh, we'll get the full moon tonight. It's bright. If you were outside last night, it was bright. Uh, it'll be that uh, way tonight, although we may see a little bit of cloud cover mixed in there too. Right now, you can see some of the clouds working across the sky. Some high clouds again today. 41 degrees at the airport. Northeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. Makes it feel like it's in the 30s still, so there is still a wind chill to contend with if you're heading outside. 39 Bernie Stage, 35 Comfort. We're at 43 in Bandera, 47 down there in Pleasanton, and 43 in New Braunfels. Uh, 44 out in Gonzales, 47 Kennedy, 44 right now in Del Rio. And the dew points are on the low end, uh, 30s, 20s, and 30s. Now, they may come up a little bit today. You're not going to notice it, uh, but we'll gradually work our way up into the pleasant and then eventually muggy category as we get into Saturday morning. There's the rise. So you, it, it'll happen tomorrow, and by Saturday morning, I think we're looking at dew points in the 60s, and then they sharply fall off once we get a front through here on Saturday. Looks like Saturday afternoon. Sunday will be much, much drier. We mentioned some of those clouds. Mid and high level clouds working through southwest and northeast. We'll continue to see these off and on through the day today. So there'll be times when it's mostly cloudy and then times when it's mostly sunny. That'll be sort of the situation today and tomorrow. Although I think by tomorrow afternoon, we'll probably see those clouds try to thicken up a little bit in advance of our next storm system, which is out west right now affecting parts of California. Very heavy rain, heavy snow out there. Meantime, there is a lake effect snow going on across the northeast. We're kind of caught in the middle here underneath the ridge where things are quiet for now. But this storm system will work in our direction and uh, we'll get a little bit of energy from it. Unfortunately, we're not going to get much rain. It looks like just some cloud cover, maybe some drizzle Saturday morning, and that's it. Uh, we're not going to get any uh, measurable rainfall uh, here in San Antonio, I don't think. Uh, but let's take a look at the forecast here. It does work its way east, and by tomorrow, we're looking at partly to most of cloudy skies. And then by Saturday morning, clouds fill in. We may see a shower, maybe some drizzle, maybe some fog. There will be a thin line of showers with this front, but I think by and large, it misses us to the east and northeast here in San Antonio. And then by 7 o'clock, sky's clear, and uh, we're left high and dry yet again. And so drought conditions may start to creep back in here. So we're going to have a pretty nice stretch here, I think, of rain-free weather. 59 degrees today, partly cloudy. Northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then we'll go uh, 68 tomorrow. Uh, cloudy through, I'd say, early afternoon on Saturday. Then some clearing. 72 on Sunday and breezy, much drier. 67 Monday. And then uh, 69 as we work our way into February. And warm on Wednesday as well, guys. Very nice overall, though, Justin. Pretty nice forecast. Thank you. 948, about 43 degrees. We'll be right back. 952, you cannot visit Washington's National Zoo because of the pandemic, but that doesn't make America's youngest panda cub any less cute. That's why the zoo decided to use technology to help his fans get a closer look at the five-month-old. Aw, seeing as Jeannie Mose takes a look.
Washington's National Zoo is closed due to COVID, but they couldn't resist pandering to panda fans with this. We actually just woke him up from a nap. From nap to his first live virtual encounter full of panda baby talk. Right, bud? What are you doing? You're so silly. Oh, sweet potatoes, delicious. Actually, the live encounter consisted mostly of eating cooked sweet potatoes in various positions. Nothing like eating your sweet potato upside down. Five-month-old Xiao Chi Ji has come a long way, so small when he was born. You could hear, but not really see him, which was a relief. Considering his looks, these are some of his first steps. Xiao Chi Ji is Chinese for little miracle. It was somewhat miraculous that his 22-year-old mother was able to produce a cub at her advanced age. It wasn't until he was six weeks old that they were able to determine he is a he. The gender reveal included a blue abstract painting done by the cub's father. Oh, it's another boy. Soon he was able to scratch and yawn simultaneously. Even his mom seemed startled by his feisty bark. But when the zoo compared him in size to an eggplant, he seemed offended. Oh, I'm sorry. He plays with everything from a giant hockey puck to a crate smeared with honey. No wonder he managed to cram his entire body inside. He seems to do a lot of falling, often with a nudge from his mother, who occasionally lugs him around. By scruffing him, which you would see your cat at home do. Xiao Chi Ji's virtual encounter was a smash. <laughs> Remember how he looked and sounded. Coming into this world, inspiring headlines like, I watched, but I wish I hadn't. Now he's the world's cuddliest creature, transformed from a shrieking alien salamander that could send chills down your spine. Genimos, CNN. Right, Bubba? New York. Got some lungs on him, doesn't he? Yes. What is it about baby pandas that are so cute. <laughs> All right, uh, 59 degrees uh, today. We'll see partly cloudy skies. Uh, more clouds coming up tomorrow, especially in the Saturday morning. But clearing Saturday afternoon, we'll salvage a pretty good weekend. Actually, 77 on Saturday, 70 on Sunday. We got another family event for you right now on KSAT.com. Yeah, if you like the drive-throughs, we have one here in San Antonio. This is for the drive-through dinosaur adventure available for a limited time. So I want to tell you first off where it's at. It's going to be set up in the parking lot at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, located at the 17,000 West I-10. More than 60 life-size animatronic dinosaurs are ready to greet spectators as you drive through your San Antonio adventure, which also comes with an educational audio tour. So we are told that the dinosaurs are set up in the order in which they existed and the audio tour, which is available in English and Spanish, is filled with jokes and fun facts about each dinosaur. We're also told that there's a, an interactive trivia game for the whole family to play throughout the tour and at the end you'll receive a scorecard. All winners get an official Dino Guru certificate at the end of the tour. So you just like mission accomplished. That's so. pretty cool. I love this picture here, by the way. <laughs> and because of COVID-19, of course, you have to stay in your vehicle. So tickets for the tour are available on our line. And we have a link on our website, kset.com. Uh, they're available from January 28th through February 14th. And they're sold per vehicle. So per vehicle, it's uh, $49 per vehicle. And that includes up to eight people. So... You do the math there, but again, yeah. $49 per carload. And again, it's at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. It's January 28th through February 14th. More information on this story on KSAT.com. You guys have a great day.